think we may see the best of Efren here. A little bit of the heat off the levels of expectation. All of a sudden, lessened the worry of qualifying. He's up against, as was said by John McDonald, the fastest player in the world. Certainly in the world of snooker, he's very, very fast. But I suppose Luke Sarvis has got to push him pretty closely from Canada, hasn't he, Jim? You know, wouldn't want to live on the difference between those two. Excellently controlled break there from Efren and would consider himself slightly unlucky to have not got an easier shot on this two. I bet when he played that shot, he also had in mind uh, the, s the snooker behind the five. <laughs> Crowd laughing there as uh, Tony Drago was so quickly down in his shot that Efren was in his eye line and he, as he was sitting down. Not an easy game to play when, when you've actually qualified. Sometimes when there's absolutely uh, no tension in the game, sometimes you don't play your best. I have a feeling that Tony would like to get this feather in his cap anyway. You never know who you might meet in the knockout stages. That's right. The other thing, uh, as perhaps not many people know at home, it's not just that Tony Drago got to the semi-finals of this World Championship last year, but he plays an awful lot of pool now. And of all the snooker players, I would say he is the most, certainly the most practiced. And, and I think perhaps has achieved the most in the world of pool in the snooker aspect by winning the Masters last year. The break into this cluster of colours. Tony Drago to break. Seen the wing ball going right down. To know. With regularity there again. Kicked badly into the pocket. Ball shot. Ball in hand. And I don't expect this to be a particularly slow match. I doubt. I doubt very much whether Efren will get involved in any tactical battles here it will be a case of trying to run the racks as quick as possible and then settle down to prepare for the next phase of the tournament not really any problems with this particular set of balls you know Steve he uses a very long cue considering he's only about five foot eight does Reyes about 60 61 inches I was told Well, a lot of these players are not as proficient with the rest um, because they don't need to be, really. So if you have a slightly longer cue and you can adjust where you hold, where you grip it, you can reach a lot further across the table for those awkward shots. The only problem here, a little bit of work to do from five to six. Just overcooked it a fraction. But actually, may have worked out quite nicely. Efren, I think, plays with a very old Paul Q. He doesn't get sucked into the world of the new brigade of Q makers who talk a good Q. Perhaps are no better than the other ones. It's difficult to say, but uh, Efren's just got his old favourite, I believe. The simple nine. Split the opening two racks. Deposited. Considering himself slightly unfortunate to have been hampered by the eight ball on this blue two, but he's got the possibility of using the eight ball to knock the blue two into the center pocket. Yes, many players in the game feel that if Reyes does have an Achilles heel, it's in the form of his break. Mind you, you wouldn't know it after the first two he's hit here. <laughs> Very imaginative as displayed by that shot. Speaking of the break again, I remember a few years back, and I think it was the year Reyes won the World Championship, he knocked in eight racks in a row against Francisco Bustamante. You've got to have a break to be able to do that. 
somewhat easier to break off on the television tables when the, the cloth is very dry, no humidity in the, in the table at all and in the cloth. And I, I'm not too sure whether we've actually seen Earl Strickland uh, talking about that yet, but he's got some interesting views on the break-off shot in the World Championship. Yeah, we've been somewhat fortunate here. We haven't had any rain during play with all the doors open and it's been very humid already. If it ever started raining, these tables might really become a little more sluggish and certainly the throw off the cushions would change. It was the earthquakes I was more worried about, Jim. I understand they get about one of those a month here too. And you know there's a player in the United States they call the earthquake, Keith McCready. He'd enjoy it here. A softer, slightly softer break from Tony. He can break harder than that. And it's paid off in one respect, but perhaps not in another. So perhaps a safety. One onto the two ball, send the cue ball across the table behind the five. There's an option. Missed the two and has left Efren a chance. Can he manufacture a shot to get back out for position on that two ball? That's not easy. The green six is very much in the way of that. May just have enough room. The green six helped him. Very useful little touch on the six there. Now stretching over, left-handed. Ensuring to leave an angle on this three ball to get back the opposite end of the table for the pink four next. Just got to decide which side of the brown seven he decides to play for. Very cleverly taking that out of the equation, using all the angles of the table spinning the cue ball around with that side spin you can see so clearly with these spotted cue balls steve i saw a set of snooker balls with a cue ball like that i wonder what the chances are of getting that one through yeah You know, I'm sure people think it may put you off the shot. After a while, you don't even notice. You know, you don't look at the ball uh, in that way. Um, I suppose you could say there's an optical illusion sometimes that you can't see the middle of the ball because it's a spot to one side or the other. But generally, you look through the cue ball somewhat. Reyes smoothly and confidently. a silly thing to do well for somebody who can't break that's a pretty good result isn't it I know there's a little bit of luck attached but um, but a terrible position on the two ball look nowhere near it not so easy to play safe when there's less balls on the table so trying to manufacture a good safety shot here perhaps you'll play the double he may play the bank Definitely didn't there. You can see by where the cue ball finished up that he was no intentions of playing position for the three. So what can Tony do? This isn't easy. Playing the safety to just in front of the middle pocket. And it's just poked its nose out. It is very difficult to pot into that middle, I would imagine. But it's a, a realistic opportunity into the corner pocket. It may go in the middle. Didn't look a problem. 4-1 from Tony Drago. Looks like he's going to be breaking to save the match. And 
and this certainly will help Efren Reyes move up in the table in his group. off the break. And unfortunately for Drago as well, no shot on the one. That one ball getting kicked safe there by the two. Now, does he play a safety shot or does he play the aggressive bank shot? I don't really think there's any value in playing the bank shot. Why not play the right shot? Bit of match practice. Just sneaked it behind the two. And that's a very good safety. Made more difficult for the escape by the, the green six that stops Efren going to the other side of the, the table. But there's a chance to play a snooker back here if he can contact the ball full. Good pace on that shot. Tony gets down, barely gives us chance to try and figure out what he's going to do. Now clapping every shot here. If they play at this speed, they may as well just clap continuously. Great representation from the Philippine contingent this year. Really, no one that didn't turn out. One of the Filipino stars, Jose Perica, now lives in America, failed to make it through the qualifying stages. Just not getting the balls completely safe, Tony. Well, they're safe, but at this level of play, leaving your opponent this type of shot can lead to problems, as he can get you in a very, very good snooker back. Ooh, he doesn't want this to really go in. Well, perhaps he does, I don't know, but he's left himself a very difficult two. They love that. <laughs> Perhaps somebody's just told him a joke at the same time. Whether or not he can pot the two past the five, but then trying to maintain position for the three is awkward. Oh, it's tight. No, safety across the face of the two. Left hand spin, trying to keep that ball as close to the bottom cushion as possible but concentrating on sending the blue two in a direct line at the table Tony spotted something very quickly yes I thought he might be playing that shot it's just come unstuck and now Efren's got the choice the two nine combination or run the rack normally the two nine would be a winner a little more difficult than just slotting the two and in playing position to the three though so he's taking the overland path to victory here. But I've got a feeling he's going to be pretty sure-footed on that path regardless. came out to watch here today have really been treated to some terrific nine ball in this match no different Reyes putting on a clinical display not only of breaking but masterful positional play and safety play with it and that's the reason 